Double slit interference. I'm going to show you how to solve double slit interference problems and where these equations came from. So what we were looking at with double slit interference is typically we have some small apertures and we fire some light, laser light typically, uh, at these apertures and then we observe an interference pattern on a distant screen. And we want to use the laws of physics to predict perhaps uh, we might be able to determine a wavelength of that laser light or maybe predict where the bright spots are on this distance screen. And so the distance between these apertures is by convention is usually we use a symbol D for that. Okay. And let's say we pick some arbitrary point here and we want to find the path difference for the um, the two sources of light here. So we'd have some light coming from here going and hitting that spot and we would have light coming from here. And so um, this location on the distance screen is further away from this opening than it is from this opening. That would be a path difference. And I'm going to use the symbol delta R actually in this particular case. So um, we, if we're looking for constructor interference, the path difference will equal um, m, where m is an integer, times the wavelength. So kind of our usual formula for constructive interference. I'm using r as the symbol for uh, for how far uh, these uh, this light is traveling, um, as opposed to d because d is already taken with uh, that dis the distance between the apertures. Okay, so. I'm not going to show you the exact derivation of this, but other people have derived the path difference, and hopefully you can recognize that this, uh, this path is longer than this path, and if you take those two distances and subtract, you end up with d times sine theta. Okay, and this is true for constructive or destructive. We could have m plus one half on the right, where theta is the angle that these rays make from uh, from going straight. Okay, so there'd be an angle of zero at the um, exact midpoint uh, directly across from these uh, from these apertures. And so we measure, uh, in this case, we'd measure from horizontal to determine theta. Now you may look at this drawing and think, well, the, which angle do we take? Do we take the angle of this one or the angle of this one? Well, keep in mind that this is not to scale. So this distance here is a macroscopic distance, typically uh, L, usually on the order of meters. This distance here, the distance from uh, from the center to the location in question, was typically used the symbol Y for that. That's usually on the order of millimeters. And D is usually a fraction of a millimeter, very tiny distances. So what that means is that these two paths are almost parallel. Okay, So there is really a single angle associated with uh, both of these paths, even though it doesn't look like it in my not to scale drawing. Okay, so don't let that bother you. There's just a single uh, angle. And so we uh, throw in that uh, d sine theta that somebody else drive for us uh, as the path difference, set that equal to the condition for constructive interference. And that's probably an equation that you uh, have seen in a, in a textbook. Um, it's actually not super useful from a practical standpoint because it's pretty hard to go get a protractor and measure this distance. So instead of uh, thinking about the angle or uh, trig functions, it's better to think about it in terms of these distances. Okay, These are things that you can go and measure. You can measure locations of bright or dark spots on a screen. You can measure the distance between the apertures and that screen. So let's get uh, this term in terms of these things that we can measure. So. Um, we're going to use what's called the small angle approximation, which is an assertion that sine theta is approximately equal to tangent theta. And then looking at the definition of tangent op, uh, opposite over adjacent, tangent theta is y, the location of the darker uh, bright spot, divided by l, the distance from the apertures to the screen. So I take that and substitute it into here and I get a fairly simple equation. And so this equation here is uh, usually rearranged to solve for y. You know, if we know the wavelength, the distance to the screen, the distance uh, between the apertures, we can predict 
the locations on the screen. So it'd be m lambda times L over D. Okay, and that might be an equation you've seen in a textbook as well. But you can imagine rearranging this equation for, for whatever un, unknown you, uh, you can imagine. Okay, and of course, uh, you can, if you, this is for bright spots, constructive interference, and then you can uh, just replace m with m plus one half if you're looking for dark spots, destructive interference. And of course, there's, uh, there's in intermediate behavior. So the, um, the dif diffraction pattern is actually alternating bright and dark spots, but they uh, aren't super well defined. There you get, an, um, the intensity goes up and down in subtle ways. Uh, and so, um, you know, we're, we're only talking about the exact location where uh, there is the very brightest center of the bright spot and then the, the darkest spot when we're referring to constructive and destructive interference. Okay, so in, the next, uh, I will, in another video, I will show you how to use these equations to, uh, to, to solve a problem. Okay, thanks for watching.